Hi everyone, I'm Alain Solar from Analog Studio in the studio and this is a short demonstration of the use of the, the converted polar land camera converted to what? Converted to shoot in StaxWide Fuji in StaxWide, widely available made by Fujifilm and the cost presently with this comes down to about a dollar a photo which is a lot less than the long discontinued pack film which is now about ten dollars frame so about hundred dollars for ten pack on the used market so the pictures look like this which is quite amazing and um, how do you do that well uh, you should instax right via a device called the Lomograph Lock. I don't make this. Lomo makes this and they sell them online on their website at lomography.com or at the retailers such as BMH. The cost is about $180, includes tax and free shipping sometimes. And, um, and this is not a full camera, this is just the back that processes Instax Wide prints. So let's start with this. I have a pack of 10 photos of Instax Wide. Let's open this. The pack has a plastic dark slide. There's an empty pack inside. Insert this. Make sure that you match this white dot, white stripe with this uh, yellow stripe with this yellow other yellow stripe. Insert it as perpendicular as you can. Close this carefully and now you're ready to shoot. Well, not quite ready to shoot because before you can take images, you're going to have to eject that first dark slide. And how do you do this? Well, the back is an on off button right here. And once you turn it on, you can also remove the dark slide. Don't do it now, do it in the camera because otherwise we're going to fog the photos. And um, and then it also has an eject button over here. So on off, eject. Once it turns on, you're going to see it lights up and has a counter. And it starts at zero, which is means is, this is the dark slide. So let's eject the dark slide. The back dark slide, plastic dark slide, as opposed to the back dark slide, which is this metal thing. And uh, now there's 10 frames in the camera. And it starts at 1, so it's going to go from 1 to 10 and then reset. So this is ready to shoot. Now let's focus on the camera. This is an automatic Polaroid camera, Polaroid LAN 250. And then uh, I have uh, converted it to shoot in stack swipe via two things. I print 3D printed graph lock rays which would allow us to slide this in and out and also I have shifted the lens board back by a certain amount to match the new focal plane because the, on the tomography back the focal plane is where the eject slide is which is not on the rails that means that if we just kept it as such the photos would be out of focus so let's do that now in order to keep this fold it, it doesn't fold all the way as it used to be in order to fold it, I also designed a front hook so let's unhook that this will allow the bellows to extend and we do it the way we do in a pack film and yes, okay, so press on this and then make sure it locks and also you know, you notice that I also included a film cap protect the lens from scratches so make sure you remove that if you don't remove it you're not gonna know because it has a separate viewfinder rangefinder combined so you look through here you're gonna see a bright yellow square in the middle of the image it's a rectangle actually and then this is the focus lever Using that, you're gonna move it to the upper lap, the image is in the center, and then spray. 
Now, in order to properly frame the piece, you, because of the conversion details, I had to shift this down a bit. And also because of the insect whiting is narrower than the original three by four inches Polaroid film. That means that horizontal frame is gonna stay identical. They're about the same width, but vertical framing has to be adjusted a bit. So if you want something in the center of the image, you're gonna have to put it down up a bit about one frame, one fifth of the frame. So anything you want in the center, move it up a lot of the frame. Or otherwise, if you shoot something and it shows up in the center, in the middle of the image, it's gonna end up being higher than the center of the image in the final form. And I'll show you as I show the photo. So also for each of my cameras, I select the proper ISO setting and the darker lighting, light one setting. So the photos come up properly and you think, well, this is ISO 800, so designed for a couple of uh, ISO films. You see that you have this ISO selected level here is 150, 75, 150, uh, 300, 3000. And you also have a scene lever selector. It's this guy here which will go from this row indoor to outdoor. Uh, so for this particular camera, uh, it turns out that because of the electric eye, this detector, the cadmium sulfide uh, photo cell is old, you get a proper exposure for Instax film of this combination. If you send the ISO to 150 and the scene selection to indoor dot flash. This would actually open the lens to maximum aperture to give it the best, the most uh, narrow uh, field of view, so the better looking pictures, and uh, the shortest possible exposure times indoors and outdoors, which is great, that's what you want. So, uh, let's say uh, I have done that. So, this is the scene is set to indoors, this is ISO 150, and I also Selected this to lighten a bit. This will, that's about so I experiment for each camera I sell and convert and to find the proper settings. And these are the ones for this particular camera. Right. How do you attach the remote drop mount? You simply slide it in. And then you can see it's turned it off so you don't accidentally eject anything. And then once you hit, come here, you're going you're to reach a stop. You've reached the felt and some plastic pieces there in the lower part. So just push it and it's going to lock in positively. This is not going anywhere, right? And uh, we're ready to shoot. See, let's take our dark slide. Turn on the camera for a dark slide and then it lights up. And then the the minimum focus distance of this is about a meter. So my phone right now is recording this is higher meter. So it's in the center and I don't want it in the center. I, I do want the photo phone in the center, so the place is a little higher. It's about here. It's about one fifth of the frame. Oh, cut the shutter. Okay. So it's quite a slow exposure as you heard, we're indoors, so the picture may end up being a little blurry, these are f.8 automatic cameras, even at ISO 800, the exposure turns out to be, I did measure a line meter about a quarter of a second, so. Um, the automatic cameras are truly designed for lots of light for outside photos. But have no fear, there's a way around that, and it's called flash. So, okay, let's put this aside. While this develops, I mentioned flash. So, let's uh, put in the dark slide and make a habit to re put the dark slide back in and turn off the camera just to prevent automatic ejects. Uh, don't prevent further ejects. Oh look, it's coming up again. Not badly exposed at all. 
All right? And let's talk about the flash. Now, when you add the flash, the camera is still gonna leave an electric eye, it's still gonna expose what you think it should, so it's like pretty long inside. However, it doesn't matter because the duration of the exposure when you do flash photography is pretty much dictated by the flash duration, which is uh, on the order of a thousand of a second, two thousand of a second for most modern flashes. So, for a customer sent me a flash for testing, and I said, let's do it for testing, and it's a newly available Godox Lux Junior. The flash number for this uh, uh, flash is 16, which is fairly relevant because this is going to be automated. But and uh, you could do the math and everything, see. But I, I experimented basically, and I noticed that um, I get uh, for a distance of about one meter, uh, I get properly exposed photos if I leave the camera untouched the way it was for outside photos and I set the flash up with uh, about a quarter of a second. So this flash has a manual, so let's turn it on. The manual, not all on. You can wait till it sinks, uh, till it charges. This will turn green. And it comes with a little SIM cord. The SIM cord plugs in here. Also, the 250s do not have a flash socket, so I added one. So, especially, oh, I sent it, triggered it, it's okay. It's turning it flashes, let's turn it off. Okay. okay pushing it. It's a cold socket, it will not allow you to do. So that's why you have to use the SIM cord. And we plug in a SIM cord in here. It's a little tight. The port here is a little tight, but it works. So don't push it all the way, kind of work for its way. Allow it to make its way in. Should be fine. Move the core out of the way. The flash on again. It's fine and do the same trick. Let me move the phone. Right. And let's repeat this. So I said, the output, so this is a manual, the output says it's about 1.8. One of the flash output. And uh, turn the camera on. Move the black slide. Of course. The beauty of this is it's going to obtain flash photos at the same maximum aperture. So the field of, uh, the depth of the field is going to be identical with the outside photos, which is great. Yeah, so again, if you want, I want the phone in the center, so I have to put it down a bit. Cut the shadow. Don't forget to do that. And then Awesome, and let's inject this photo as well. Alright. Meanwhile, the um, original photo is done. It's turned out to be a little underexposed, uh, but it did be there for the whole scene. So it may be. It probably made it for the walls and this are still dark so maybe you have to adjust that to lighten more a bit. I will do that but let's see get the flash photo. Yep. This is a one eight of the output. Seems to be exposed properly. Even the walls behind it. Could probably the phone is a little bright, so it could even go to about 116. So it'd be 116 on flash output for a distance uh, for follows of the closest distance, and then yeah, and then lighten a bit, and then we should be good to go. And uh, that's it. 
this camera, let me go reverse. So we want to just connect the flash, flash off. Make sure when you unplug this, pull it straight out and kind of wiggle it out. So the flash is a little screw here, I hold it in place. Actually, let's put the dark side back in. Be sure it goes all the way in and then turn it off. Remove the lomograph lock. It comes out with some force, as it should. We attach the cover, which is to protect the lens and the bellows from any dust. Okay, let's remove the flash. Let's do this. So if I can counter a little distance, there's a thin sensor thing that should come out. Alright, put this aside and then fold down, or push this down a bit and then kind of lift the front standard. So it goes in easily. Alright, it's done. As you see, it doesn't fold all the way in, but that's why we have this clip. So and then push this clip up and then snap it in place. It's gonna go over the front rail and then attach your Film cap and you're good to go. Alright, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, these are the cell controllers. So the flash one is probably well exposed, I would say. So 180 the flash output or minimal distance seems to be okay. Uh, but the non-flash one seems to be a little Underexposed, and but then again, this is mid range for a whole scene. So, shooting outside, I noticed that it's proper. So, you can play with the dark and light on this is the dark light and switch, and then make them brighter. So, lighter would be more exposure, so but also longer exposure time. So, uh, that's it. Thanks for watching. Bye.